This morning we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Amen. And we're going to be looking at the wisdom that God gave Solomon on decision making. And some of the questions that I believe that Solomon wanted his son to grapple with and to really think about is, where is he placing his trust at? And if he says he's placing his trust in God, then the next follow-up question would be, is he trusting God with all? So this morning, as we read from this passage, I would also like for us to wrestle with that very same question. Amen? Where are we placing our trust at? And if we say we're trusting God, are we really trusting him with all? Are we trusting him in our marriages? Are we trusting him with our children? Are we trusting him with our finances and our health? Are we truly trusting him with all? So this is something that we really want to think about as we read from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 10. And it is a custom that we stand for the reading of his word. Amen. When you have it, say amen. And I'm going to read from verse 5 through 10. And it reads, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil and it will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first fruit of your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. May the Lord add a blessing to this word. Amen. So in this chapter, Solomon is writing, you may be seated. Solomon is writing a letter to his son, and he's advising his son to walk right before the Lord. Walk right before him in valuing his word, trusting him. To be humble and have a reverent fear before him and to honor him with his possessions. And Solomon, he's given his son advice. Excuse me. He's given his son advice. And we must first believe that Solomon must have been through some stuff in order to trust, to be able to come to a place where we can trust God. Amen. And he must have been stuck between a rock and a hard place many days in his life. Amen. And now he sees his son going through some things. And he's given his son advice. The advice that his son is receiving is coming from a place, from a father who's been there. How many can attest to what I'm saying this morning? Can identify? You see your kids going in the direction that they shouldn't be going. And here we give them advice from our life experience. And we tell them, son, don't do this. And daughter, don't do that. Because this will be the end result. And guess what? They go ahead and they do it anyway, right? And then they learn the hard way. And that's why I think it's very important that when we're giving advice to our children or to anyone from our life experience to always give advice also from the word. Because it's in the word that you're going to be able to tell you, talk about marriages, right? It's in the word that you're going to be talking about health and finances and how to raise children. It's in the word that you'll find it. Everything pertaining to your life. Amen? So this is why Solomon is telling his son, son, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now let's think about that word trust for a moment. You see, when we put our trust in something or someone, we're placing our life, our confidence, and security in this entity or that person, right? Let me give you an example. You buy a new home. Right, for those that are buying a new home, now you have to buy a security system. Okay, like ADT. You're trusting that ADT is going to keep you and your family safe from anything that's going around in the neighborhood. You're placing your confidence and your trust in this security system. Amen? And that's placing, that, that's what we're doing. We're putting our confidence and our trust on something. Now let me give you another example. Placing our trust in someone. My kids, they have confidence in me, 
okay? And they have trust in me because I have their best interests at heart. They know that whatever I say and do, they can trust me because I'm going to follow through because of that son and father relationship that we have. Amen? So they're going to put their trust in me and confidence in me. I remember there was a time that Joshua, um, he was sitting at the table just the same way Sister Persis is sitting there with his legs crossed. But see, my son Joshua had his hands inside his shirt. Both of his hands were inside his shirt. So I'm talking to my wife in the room, and all of a sudden we hear, and Joshua falls. He's screaming and crying, and we run to the living room. He split his whole lip, bleeding and crying. So here we go, and we take him to the emergency room, get him butterfly stitches, get him taken care of, we come back home. And one thing that Joshua used to love to do is he used to, when I used to come home, he used to love running to me. He used to, one thing is good to have your kids running to you when you come home or running away from you when you're coming home. That's one thing that you can tell the relationship you have. But Joshua used to always run to me. And I would catch him and throw him up in the air. And he used to love it. He used to catch him and go back and forth. And he used to just love it. No fear at all. But when he fell, I tried to do that to him again. Joshua didn't trust that I would catch him because of the pain that he had experienced from that fall. And sometimes that's kind of like the level of trust that we have with our father, with our heavenly father. Sometimes the pain that we experience doesn't allow us to trust God. Sometimes the pain that we're going through, whether we're pain in, in, in our health, our health is failing, or... Um, the loss of a loved one, right? We, sometimes we hurt and, we, and then we don't trust God. We only trust God when everything is all going good. When everything is going all right and we trust God. But we need to trust God in those certain areas as well. We need to put our trust in him knowing that he is able to do what he said he would do. Amen. So to, to trust the Lord means we're placing our lives, our entire being at his feet. And this kind of trust means that we're surrendering our will, our mind, our concerns, our worries. Whatever we're going through, we are to surrender it at his feet. Okay? And in his sovereignty and who he, say he, say, who he says he is. Amen? So whenever we use that term, with all our heart, what does it mean? What does that term mean, with all your heart? It means that we need to let him sit at the throne of our heart. Let him have full access of our heart. It is not half-stepping. We can't say we're trusting the Lord with all our heart if we got one foot in the church and one foot in the world. How can that be? How can you say you're trusting him, right, with all your heart? If we haven't given him control of our hearts. So to trust the Lord with all your hearts, it means that he has to claim the throne, claim rightful place of the throne of our hearts. Amen. Warren Wiersbe, he gives an illustration of a person who puts their trust in the Lord as one laying down, face, laying down helpless, face down. That's trusting. That's like surrendering. Like I got beaten up already in life by all my life worries and all my life concerns. Now, I'm, you know what, I'm just going to lay down and surrender to God. He gives another illustration that it pictures a servant waiting for his master's command in readiness to obey. Now he's just waiting for his master's command. Why? Because you're trusting that he's going to lead, the master's going to lead you into the right way. He also gives an illustration of a defeated soldier yielding himself to the conquering general. Right? So it all in, in, in other words, we are placing our trust in the Lord and we are surrendering at his feet. And if we can be honest with ourselves, this is easier said than done. It's, it's hard for us to believe that God can and will do what he said he will do. It's hard. Chuck Swindoll says it this way, this kind of trust does not come easily. 
It is a spiritual crisis of the will in which we must choose to exercise faith and trust God to provide what he thinks is best and in whatever time he chooses it to make it available. So the key phrase there is we must choose to exercise faith. Are we choosing to exercise faith this morning? Are we choosing to exercise faith to trust God? Because if not, then we really have to question ourselves, are we putting our confidence and our security in the Lord? We really have to question that. Numbers 23 says, he is not man that he should lie, nor the son of man that should repent. Amen. You see, man will always change. Man will change up. Romans 3, 4 says, let God be true and every man, every person a liar. That indicates that I'm capable of lying. See, I trust my wife because she hasn't given me any reason not to trust her because she hasn't lied to me. I trust her. But we are capable of lying. We are capable of being that person that will put hurt on someone. Like it says, don't put your trust in man. We are that person. We can be that person to, to let the person down and, and, and feeling hurt. Yet, God is faithful. Yet, God is trustworthy. Yet, he's the perfect one. So are we putting our trust in the Lord? And there's so much that we can glean from these verses. Let's look at the term, lean not on your own understanding. You see, to lean not on your own understanding means that completely we have to totally rely. We can't rely on ourselves no more. We need to really totally and, and make a conscious decision to trust the Lord. We need to put all our way of thinking, all, our, all that we think we understand, put it to the side and rely on his understanding because he knows what's best for us. He knows what's best for us. And many of us have a desire to understand why we go through so much in life. Many of us have a desire to understand why do we go through what we go through in the manner and the capacity that we do. And when we don't understand, we begin to question God. We begin to wonder why and start, you know what, now I don't trust God, so I have to take matters into my own hands. We begin to question God. We don't understand. Isaiah 55 verse 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. You see, God is omniscient, pastor says this all the time. He knows your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. There is not a thing that God is unaware of that concerns you. He knows everything about you. Us, on the other hand, we have a limited understanding. We have a limited understanding of what tomorrow may bring. We can make plans for tomorrow, and guess what? Our plans will change within a second. Because we don't know what tomorrow may bring, only he does. And this is why he knows what's best for us. And yet there are those, even understanding and knowing that he knows what's best for us, still want to go ahead and take matters into their own hands. Right? If you're not playing by their rules, then they want to quit. If you're not, if God doesn't do it your way, then you know what, God, I quit. I'm, that's it. I'm done. You didn't answer my prayer the way you, I needed it to be answered. I'm leaving. I'm not trusting you no more. And they walk away from the things of God. But he says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Excuse me. I don't know what is it about being up here. You get the dry mouth. <laughs> you get the shakes. You get the nerves. But I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you, God. Amen. So I, I was saying, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and your thoughts higher than my th than 
and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And because his ways and our ways are infinitely, his ways are infinitely higher than us, this is why we're commanded to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in all our ways. We are, to call, we are called to acknowledge him. What does that mean to acknowledge him in all our ways? Not some days or some ways, but to acknowledge him in all our ways every day. You see, because when we begin to acknowledge him in all our ways, you know, when we don't acknowledge him, let me put it this way, when we don't acknowledge him in all our ways, we're denying his very existence that he is trustworthy. We're denying that he is reliable, that he is true. But when we don't, but when we do, we're saying that, you know what, I'm believing who he says he is. He says, I am the Lord, I change not. When we put in our trust in him, we're trusting that he is who he says he is. Right? I am the Lord that changed not. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Isaiah uh, 43 says this, he is the Lord and there is no other Savior besides him. This is why we need to acknowledge him in all our ways because there's no one else besides him. If you're acknowledging pastor's way or you're acknowledging Jose's way, right, we put in our trust in others. But when we acknowledge him in all our ways, we put in our trust in him. Okay, because we, we, when we do so, then we're, we're not able to take things into our own hands. We don't have to take matters into our own, own hands. And then we can re, re start receiving the blessings of the Lord over our lives. Amen? So it says, and he will direct your path. He will begin to establish our steps and lead us to where he needs us to be. He will guide us and direct us in where we need to go. He will direct your paths. Amen. So let me give you some biblical characters of those whose lives were an example when they trusted God as he directed their path. First one I want to talk about is Abraham, the father of many nations. Right? At the age of 75, he had a trust that God was the one talking to him to say, get up and go to a land that he'd never been to. He had to trust that voice that he heard and say, you know what, okay, I'm going to trust you, God. And even through experience famine and leaving everything that he had, he trusted God. Not only that, but now God is promising him that he's going to make him a father of many nations. And in his old age, right, it says that at 100 years old, can you imagine Abraham? Well, I mean, back then, we would look at 100 like that. But back then, 100 was probably like, you know, they were living, they were living to like about what, 900? <laughs> so they, 100 was like they were 20 years old. Like, but 100 years old and Sarah, 90, had no kids. They trusted God, that God will make him a father of many nations. They trusted him. Can you imagine that? Like, I, that's something that is hard to imagine because in our own human, humanness and our own knowing that, I wish that we were able to live 900 years. I don't know what I would be doing by eight or by five. Well, I don't even know what I'll be doing by next year. But Abraham trusted God. Genesis 5, 6 says this, Abraham believed the Lord and he accounted him for righteousness. The English definition of believe is to have confidence in the truth. The existence or the reliability of something, although without absolute proof that one is right in doing so. So in other words, Abraham trusted. So if we were to translate that um, Abraham believed in the Lord, it would sound Abraham trusted God and it was counted as righteousness. He had to come to a place, he had to exercise faith. He had to exercise faith to trust God. The second one I want to talk to you about is Joseph. Joseph is another one that regardless of what he went through as a young adult, as a youth, right, he had, his experience separated him from all the others. 
He came from being a shepherd boy to becoming a slave, from being a slave to being a convict, from being a convict to a prison administrator. Like, can you imagine that? Now all of a sudden, y'all, here I am a slave, then I'm in prison, and now I'm a prison administrator. If anything, he had more than enough reason not to believe that God wasn't walking with him. He chose to trust God. He chose to exercise faith. He chose to exercise faith and to trust in him. And by doing so, he became second in command to Pharaoh. He became the prime minister of Egypt. See, he chose to exercise faith. The other one is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know their story. They also chose to trust God. They chose not to bow down to a golden statue that was erected by King Nebuchadnezzar. Right? And King Nebuchadnezzar told him, man, if you don't worship this statue at the sound of the horns and the, and the, the trumpets or at the sound of the music, you're going to be thrown in the fiery furnace. But they chose to trust God. Daniel 3, 5, Daniel 3, 16 says this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If in this case our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, <laughs> but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor we will worship the gold image which you have set up. They had an if not in their spirit. He says, but I trust that the God, my God whom I serve, is able. Come on. He is more than able. They trusted that God was able to deliver them. But if not, but if not, we got to have but if not in our spirit. We got to have a but if not in our spirit this morning. That if God doesn't, if we don't get to see our children saved in our lifetime, we're trusting God that you know what? He's going to be true to his word that he says, though me and my household shall be saved. We're trusting him to the end. And they were trusting God to the very end. They chose not to serve man, but to serve God only. Verse 20 says, 25 says this. I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they were not hurt. And the fourth, and the form of a fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. The fourth is, is a form like a son of God. There's a song by Hillsong. Um, another in the fire. There was another in the fire standing next to me. They were the first one to sing that, that, that song. They were the first one to sing that song. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the water holding back the sea. And if I ever need reminded of how he set me free, I could sing it. I <laughs> Amen. But the good thing is that when we're able to trust God in difficult situations like this, we're able to trust God with the little things. We're able to trust God as our healer. We're able to trust God as our comforter. We're able to trust God as our provider, our protector, our defender. We're able to put our trust in God when we trust him with the difficult things. Let me give you some promises for those who put their trust in the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord have no reason to fear. Psalm 112 verse 7, he is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. Psalm 56, 4, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust and I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? There's a boldness that comes when you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. What can mere mortals do to me? Right? I can picture that, like the Batman movie. You could, it may, I just, my mind be everywhere. I can picture when I was reading that, it's like the guy that was going to rob this, this, this dude in the movie, and then they see the shadow of Batman in the back. And he, when he goes, 
He turns around and he leaves. That's the way our God is when he protects us. But he's on the side of us, right? And somebody's going to come and do you harm. They look and they see God. Hallelujah. Because God, he's with us. So why shall we fear? Why do we have to give in to the fear when we know that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind? Amen? So those that uh, trust in the Lord have no fear. Those who trust in the Lord have a certain peace about them. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is steadfast because they trust in you. Those who trust in the Lord are content with what they have. Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because he said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord's. To me that means not only do we have to trust them with all, but trust them in all. Right? Because we could trust them, but are we trusting him with all and are we trusting him in all? Psalm 9:10. And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. I'll say that again. And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. I believe that, and we spoke about this on, on Friday Bible study, that one of the reasons why a lot of us fail to put our trust in God because we have a limited revelation of who he is in our lives or who he is in general. We have a limited revelation of who he is. How can you trust him as Lord when you haven't accepted him as your Savior? How can you trust him to be your provider when you're going everywhere else trying to get ways and means to provide? How can you trust him as your healer when you don't know him as Jehovah Jireh? No, that's your provider. Our healer is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. How can you know him as the Prince of Peace if you don't know him as Jehovah Nisi? You don't know him that he is the peace, he, is the peace, he gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. We have a limited understanding of who God really is. And the only way we're going to get a full revelation of who he is, can anybody guess? Flipping the pages. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Father, you are our healer. It says that in, by your stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Father, it says that you are protector of those. Father, you are my strong tire, t- uh, tower. You are my refuge. You are my strength. Hallelujah. We have to stay in the word. That's the only way you're going to get a full understanding of who he really is. If you're not staying in his word, then guess what? We're leaning on our own understanding. We're not acknowledging him and who he is. Right? What I like about these two verses, the first two verses sets the tone for the rest of the three. If we are acknowledging him, and we are trusting him, then guess what? We're, le- we're, we're, under, we're, we're, we're believing that he's going to lead us and guide us and direct us. We don't have to put our trust in anything else but him. Amen? If you're trusting him and acknowledging him in all your ways, then you're honoring the Lord with your wealth. Because you're believing that everything that, he, that you have, he's the one that's provided for you. So this is why he says, Honor him from your wealth, from the first fruits. If we're trusting in him, you say, you know what? Times are rough and I got to do this, but Lord, here it is because I'm trusting you. We need to trust him. So again, I asked this morning, where are you placing your trust at? 
And if you say you're placing your trust in God, then are you really trusting him with all? Are you really trusting him in all? And if not, this is the time that where we can commit our ways to the Lord. And there's promise when we commit our ways to the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 4 through 6 says this. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will. Again, delight yourself in the word, in the Lord, and he will. He will. That means that he's going to do something, right? He will. It doesn't say that he won't, but it says that he will give you the desires of your heart. Then it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trusting him, and this is where it's at. There's the promise. And he will act. I love that part. That's a promise. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will. Commit your ways to the Lord, trust him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as as the noonday. Amen. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes in reverence to the Lord this morning. Amen. I trust this morning, I trust this morning that God has spoken to you, that God has met you where you're at this morning. Amen. And if you're having difficulties with trusting God, if you're having difficulties with not trusting him, with your health, with your marriage, with your finances, with your children. Today I'm asking that we commit everything to him. That we will trust him with all our heart. Trust takes action. It's just like love takes action. How can you say you love someone and you're not taking action if you're not showing it. How can you say you trust someone if we're not actually putting our trust in him? So this morning, my prayer is that you will commit your ways. And if you don't know the Lord, if you haven't acknowledged him for who he says he is, he is the Lord and there is no one else like him. My prayer is that you will put your faith, that you will exercise your faith and commit your ways to him. Father, we just want to thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, oh God, that you have spoken to us this morning. Father, today we are acknowledging who you are in our lives, oh God. Father, we are placing our trust in you, my God. We're trusting you in everything, oh God. We're trusting you with everything this morning, my God. And Father, we ask right now that whatever pain, whatever thing that we're experiencing this morning that will hold us back for fully trusting you, my God. We ask, oh God, that you will meet us right where we're at. Meet us in the midst of our pain, my God. Meet us in the midst of our troubles, oh God. In the middle of our concerns and our worries, my God, meet us right there where we're at. And Father, give us an understanding of who you are. And Father, give us a complete revelation, my God, that your word says that you are for us and not against us, my God. That you are here with us, oh God, that you have never left us, my God. That no matter what we're going through in life, my God, you have always been there. And you will always be there. So, Father, today, we ask that you will remove, Father God, everything that will hinder us from putting our trust in you, Lord God. That we will learn to trust you with the little things, my God. Not only when things are going good, my God, but when things are rough, at the roughest, oh God, when things are at the bottom, oh God, that we will look up to the heavens, my God, from where comes our help. Father, so we place our trust in you this morning, my God. Father, have rightful 
place in our hearts. Sit at the throne of our hearts this morning, my God. And Father, I pray for those, oh God, that have one foot in the church and one foot out. Father, the world can only give, you, give them but so much. We ask now, Lord God, that they will surrender their heart to you, Lord God, and that they will commit their ways totally and surrender to you in everything that they do. Father, we bless you and we honor you, Lord God, and we're going to thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do this day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and the people of God said, amen. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, those that are watching at home.